Beginning in the 1970s, after more than a century of building scepticism amongst critical Islamologists, a number of exceptional and controversial academics proposed a series of radical hypotheses concerning the nature and origins of early Islam, with some even questioning the historical existence of the Prophet Muhammad. Whilst most of these revisionist hypotheses have proven unconvincing and were generally rejected by academia, there are certain key points of evidence exposed or emphasized by said hypotheses that conclusively undermine the traditionalist narrative of the origins of Islam, including the following. There is no historical mention of a Hijazi town or trading center called Mecca prior to the Paleo-Muslim expansion of the mid to late 7th century CE. The original location of Mecca, the Kaaba, and the Qibla appears to have been northwestern Arabia, towards which most early mosques were orientated. The geographical, historical, and cultural allusions within the Qur'an, and even to some extent early Islamic tradition, better reflect a northwest Arabian milieu, rather than central Hejaz. The referential manner of the Qur'an towards biblical and midrashic narratives presupposes an Aramaic-influenced Arabic-speaking audience steeped in Judeo-Christian tradition. The first generations of Paleo-Muslims, including Muhammad and his contemporaries, believed themselves to be living in the end times. Muhammad sought to conquer the Holy Land in anticipation for the Apocalypse, and considered Palestine to be the God-given birthright and heritage of the Abraham-descended Arab peoples. Muhammad led the Paleo-Muslim conquest of the Levant after 632 CE. Paleo-Muslims acted in collaboration with Jewish tribes during their military expansion into the Levant. The earliest Paleo-Muslim epigraphic and numismatic attestations of the Shahada lacked any mention of Muhammad and simply stated La ilaha illallah, with the phrase Muhammadun Rasulallah only being added in 685 CE by the rebel Zuberi dynasty and adopted henceforth by the Marwani dynasty. Prior to the year 685 CE, during the midst of the Marwani Zuberi conflict, no Paleo Muslim or Paleo Islamic inscription ever mentions the Prophet Muhammad. The followers of Muhammad, up until the Marwani era, were initially known as believers, Mu'minun, and Hajarins, Muhajirun, the latter meaning migrants, both literally and spiritually, and also the descendants of Hagar. The terms Muslim and Islam, as identifiers of a distinct religion, only appear in the archaeological record after 691 CE, during the Marwani era. The seminal founding Marwani ruler, Abdul Malik, was the first leader of the Paleo-Muslim polity to adopt the title Deputy of God, Khalifa Allah. Hitherto, all of his predecessors were known by the title Commander of the Believers, Amir al muminun during the Marwani era, the notion of Sunnah, including the Sunnah of Muhammad, simply meant spirit, ethos, or general example, rather than a concrete set of rules or precedents. During the Marwani era, the Sunnah of Muhammad held no significantly greater importance to most early Muslims and to the Arab Muslim polity than did the Sunnah of any other prior messenger or prophet. During the Marwani era, the precedents established by the prior rulers of the Arab Muslim polity, such as Abdul Malik, Uthman, and Umar, were of equal, if not more, importance to the precedents established by the Prophet Muhammad. During the Marwani era, the Khalifa Allah, being God's deputy on earth, possessed a divinely inspired or divinely guided opinion, Rai, and was hence a divinely sanctioned living source of law comparable to the Qur'an of God and to the precedents of the prior caliphs and prophets. During the Marwani era, the Khalifa Allah superseded all prior prophets and messengers, including Muhammad, in immediate importance and relevance, given that the prophets had merely relayed God's message to mankind, whilst the caliphs were God's representatives on earth and thus divinely ordained to rule mankind on his behalf. The earliest extant Muslim historiographical sources, including the Muwatta of Malik bin Anas, who died in 796, the Musannaf of Abdurrazzaq, 
who died in 827, the Mughazi of Waqdi, who died in 822, the Sira of Ibn Hisham, who died in 833, the Tabqa of Ibn Sa'ad, who died in 845, and the Musnad of Ibn Hanbal, who died in 855, all post-date the Abbasid Revolution of 750 CE. The normative orthodox Islamic biography of Muhammad, particularly the traditional chronology of his life, is structured upon biblical narratives and archetypes. The Islamic literary tradition, including the orally transmitted hadith literature, is demonstrably, overwhelmingly unreliable, interpolated, and fabricated. Every one of these facts irrevocably undermines the traditional Muslim history narrative concerning the origins and historical development of the religion of Islam, leading one inexorably to the conclusions drawn by the so-called revisionist academics. In the words of Stephen Shoemaker, quote, There is considerable evidence to suggest that primitive Islam transformed rapidly from a non-confessional monotheistic faith with an extremely short eschatological timeline into an imperial religion grounded in a distinctively Arabian and Arab identity." Unquote. For a groundbreaking, albeit outdated and controversial, revisionist hypothesis concerning the origins and early development of Islam, see Patricia Croner and Michael Cook, Hagerism, The Making of the Islamic World. For a recent insightful analysis of the earliest Islam-related materials and their revisionist implications, see Stephen Shoemaker, The Death of a Prophet, The End of Muhammad's Life and the Beginnings of Islam. For a synthesis of the findings of modern critical Islamology, made palatable to a lay audience, see Tom Holland, In the Shadow of the Sword, The Battle for Global Empire and the End of the Ancient World.